The following is a special presentation brought to you by the villages of Orland Park and Tinley Park. Good day everyone, I'm Lisa O'Toole and I'd like to welcome you to the Orland Tinley Water Roundtable. And our panelists this evening include Orland Park Mayor Dan McLaughlin. He was first elected to the Village Board in 1983 and recently began his 21st year as Mayor of Orland Park. Also joining us is Dr. Tim Loftus. Dr. Loftus is an environmental geographer and earned his doctorate degree from Southern Illinois University in Carbondale and he joined Northeastern Illinois Planning Commission in 2005. Now, the Chicago Metropolitan Agency for Planning, it is here that Tim manages the Clean Water Act, funded planning efforts, including the watershed and TMDL planning. And finally, we'd like to welcome Tinley Park Mayor Ed Zabrocki. Tinley Park Mayor Zabrocki began his civic involvement in the early 1970s and was elected village trustee in 1977. He has served as mayor of Tinley Park since 1981 and was elected and served as a state representative for the 37th district. Welcome gentlemen to this water round table. Thank you very Thanks. much. Thanks. So we're here today to talk specifically about the water program that a number of communities have joined together. So how about we start with some background information on where our villages receive their water? I think maybe we could talk just a little bit and in getting into that about a little bit of the history of how this all came about. Certainly. I would imagine back in uh, the late 60s, early 70s, uh, Orland Park Mayor Mel Dugan and Tinley Park Mayor Jack Dunn perhaps had a meeting such as we're talking about here and having a, around this table about the water system because both our communities at that time had water coming out of wells. And those wells were questionable about how deep they were, quality of water, those kinds of things. So uh, those two mayors along with, uh, I believe it was uh, not Ernie Cole, but the mayor before him, his name escapes me at this point in time, kind of sat down Dumpke. and started. Dumpke. Dumpke, right, Fred Dumpke. Uh, they kind of sat down and started talking about <coughs> where do we get water from? Let's get it from Oak Lawn. Oak Lawn buys it from Chicago. Let's start running those lines out there. And so that's how the, the history kind of came about in the late 72, 73, Danny. Wasn't yep, that about yep. the time it came online? Uh, we're it, a little later than that. I think you may have been before us. Yeah, right, along with Oak Forest. And then you guys tied in and we went from there. So that's kind of the history of it. And what happens many times is people don't realize where the water comes from and all the implications. Uh, and that's part of our, our purpose here today is talk about where our water comes from, why are we doing what we're doing? I think that's the, the fact that we want to get across. Excellent. And Dr. Loftus, what's your involvement in this process? Well, I uh, got involved in uh, directing the regional water supply planning process that uh, began in 2006 and, and ended in 2010 with the production of Water 2050. And so uh, we uh, created a deliberative body uh, that featured Mayor McLaughlin amongst uh, 33 other uh, delegates representing nine uh, different stakeholder groups including two levels of elected officials uh, to look at uh, demand going out to mid-century along with uh, projected population growth and our supplies and how well they might match up and so CMAP's been involved ever since in trying to support uh, plan implementation efforts and just raise awareness on the idea that our water supplies are not infinite. Right, and a number of communities have been receiving their water essentially from Oak Lawn for a number of years. So what brings us to this point today in 2013? Well, we've been receiving water from Oak Lawn for obviously a number of years and uh, there's been talk for probably 15 years or so about a, a dual system, a dual line. Partly to add more capacity and partly to uh, serve as uh, security. If one line breaks and you, while it's down for a while, you still have the ability to, to uh, uh, send water to the you know, far reaches of the suburbs. Uh, I do want to add one real quick thing to uh, comment to Mayor Zabraki. Uh, in addition to the well water that we were all on, we were starting to hear from the public too that they weren't happy with mm. the quality of water and the, the need for the, uh, uh, the salt, the, the, you know, the purifiers and all the things people had to have in their own homes. So the cost in individual homes was going up too with the, with the you know, in-house filtering of uh, the well water. So that was an issue. And I do want to take a quick uh, minute to just say uh, Dr. Loftus did an unbelievable job corralling 30 strong opinions for the better part of a couple of years of meetings, but it was a worthwhile cause, but he did a great job. If I could pick up on that just for a second, Dan. 
I think it's important to understand what, what, what Tim has done and what CMAP has done. We're looking here at uh, kind of a micro microcosm of the Orland Park, Tinley Park, uh, uh, Oak Forest area. But Tim has gotten a macro view of, of the water system throughout the entire area. Everyone thinks that Lake Michigan is an, an infinite source of water. It is not. And I would go back to Danny, what you said a couple of, uh, about a year or two ago, you said uh, water is going to be the oil of 2030. And I think there's a lot of truth to that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so here's an attempt to be really proactive based upon your research. Well, that's right. I mean, there's over 160 communities in our region that rely on Lake mm -hmm. Michigan as their source of water. Uh, but uh, our access, Illinois access to the lake, is limited by a U.S. Supreme Court consent decree because all that water is diverted out of the Great Lakes Basin. Uh, therefore, we don't have unlimited access uh, to that source. And when you look at uh, all those communities and other uh, permittees that, that have an allocation for Lake Michigan water and you compare that to how much water uh, the Illinois Department of Natural Resources thinks is actually available for yet more allocations, uh, then it's about 96 percent allocated. So uh, as, as the mayor suggested, they switched from groundwater to lake water as virtually all communities did, either because of a supply or a quality problem, and so it has historically been the lifeboat for our region. Uh, but that lifeboat's getting full, and so that's why we need to start thinking more about efficiency and conservation. Excellent. I, I will also add that uh, it's not just a case of being proactive. Uh, we have a real issue to deal with, and we wouldn't be uh, doing our jobs as leaders if we weren't looking ahead. Mm -hmm. And the current capacity in our system is about 55 million gallons per day, and the projected 2030 uh, use will be in the neighborhood of 101 million gallons per day. So we need to plan for that. Uh, actually, the plans we've worked on for the last couple of years uh, go beyond 2030. But uh, and I think our contract with Oakland, will, the new contract will be uh, for 40 years. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> we're not just being proactive uh, because it's the you know right thing to do. We wouldn't be doing our job as leaders if we weren't looking ahead and trying to provide for the future. Okay. So let's look at what we're considering right now, some of the plans that are in place that our residents would like to know about. Well, basically, we have right now, when the lines were built back in the 70s, we have a 48-inch and a 36-inch line. And that's a single line that comes out to our five, five communities, five-plus communities. The redundant line that Dan is talking about is an additional 60-inch line. Mm. And that's going to give us the supply that Dan has talked about uh, up into 2040, 2050s, that kind of thing. That'll give us the re not only the redundancy, but the capacity to get that water out. And that's going to be key for the economic development of all of our communities. Very good. So we're talking about infrastructure changes. Mm -hmm. And obviously infrastructure is complicated mm -hmm. in terms of the engineering and the cost. Got to dig holes. Got to dig um, holes. <laughs> Oak Lawn, <coughs> it's, it's Oak Lawn's system. They're getting the water from Lake Michigan, from Chicago, and then they, they uh, sell it to all of us that are on the southwest line. They are putting together the program for uh, uh, improving this service. We as five communities that are, that are the bigger users on that line, we've been getting together monthly for the last well, two plus years. At least two years, Daniel. Uh, mainly to talk about uh, how, do we how do we negotiate and work with Oak Lawn to make sure we have the best system for everybody, not just for Oak Lawn, but for all of our individual communities. So we've been meeting monthly, the village managers and the mayors of the five big users uh, on this system uh, for over two years and talking about everything from uh, the route that this new line will take to be as least expensive uh, as possible mm -hmm. to what size lines are, are adequate and we have our own engineer giving us some advice. Oak Lawn is working with their engineer so there's been a lot of thought and a lot of planning and a lot of work gone into this for the last couple of years, two to, two to three years. Right. I think it's also important to remember then that we not only considered Oak Lawn, we looked at an alternative. And that alternative was going through, through Hammond, to Hammond, Indiana, or Whiting, Indiana. Really? And we looked at the, the aspects of that and the engineering that would be involved and the costs of that and found out very quickly it was just totally cost prohibitive to do that. Because literally you're running a 60-inch line down Route 30 from Whiting or Hammond, Indiana, all the way out to our area. Mm -hmm. it, it was not very practical. Right, and of course you've got to look at all the options mm -hmm. in order mm -hmm. to make a responsible decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what are we looking at right now in terms of some of those infrastructure changes, bringing that water 
Well, I might, want, I might add that one of the biggest complications with infrastructure is that since it's out of sight, it's out of mind. Mm -hmm. And while all of us drink water and expect it on demand 24-7, there's a tremendous cost involved in making sure that infrastructure is in place to get it to us. So I certainly applaud the mayors for, for taking this issue on and, and uh, making some difficult decisions because infrastructure is very expensive. It's just not a challenge here in our region, but really across the country. And for the most part, uh, when the American Society of Civil Engineers grades America's infrastructure every two years, they consider water uh, infrastructure, wastewater infrastructure, and unfortunately, uh, Illinois pretty consistently uh, gets a grade D. Um, so it's a challenge, and uh, it's going to take investment to solve it. Okay. But if anybody reads the papers and they see what Atlanta, Georgia went through mm -hmm. a couple of years ago and what Las Vegas and some other mm -hmm. western areas are going through, uh, we're lucky. We just got to plan right and, and do, the, do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And I think part of the plan planning process is, now, it, it, this is bricks and mortar, you dig the hole, you drop the 60-inch pipe and you go from there. But I think part of that, that does not give our communities unlimited water. And I think it's important as, as part of our presentation tonight, and I would depend upon Tim for that, is the conservation methods that we're going to need for our citizens to use. Now, people like to turn on this hose and let it fly. You can't do that anymore. Right. Well, for most of us, the only conservation we're acutely aware of mm -hmm. is the limited amount we're able to water during mm -hmm. the summer months, and that might be as far as we go. Mm -hmm. It's going to be well, much more extensive than that. I, I will tell you that Tim, Tim uh, made a great statement when it's out of sight, out of mind. So it's, mm -hmm. it's painful yeah. to put this kind of a program out on the street and tell the public we're going to be spending $170 million to upgrade our water system. Right now the water works perfect. Yeah. Why, <laughs> so, why do we have to do anything? Yeah. Right. So, uh, but looking ahead at the, you know, the capacity and the dual system for, for protection that uh, makes a lot of sense. So we have to explain to the public. But it is painful when you're talking about adding more money. But when you break down the cost, the in improvements to this system that we're talking about, even though it's $170 million, you're talking about $5 a month for each customer based on the average use of about 9,000 gallons uh, a day. So, uh, I th or, uh, 9,000 9, gallons a, a month. Period. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so I think even though it's a big figure, $170 million, when you break it down, the cost per person is not uh, out of sight when you think about the uh, the ability to turn your faucet on at any time of day or night and get water clean water that you can depend on out of that faucet right so. and very briefly we haven't highlighted all the communities that are involved in this negotiation mm -hmm. with you of course it's Tinley Park and Orland Park and the other communities include in New Lenox, Lokina, and Oak Forest. And Oak Forest, okay. okay. So These five. are the major users of the of that pipeline. Okay. It's also the five communities that their contracts with Oak Lawn expired. Okay. So we are uh, negotiating now to, to negotiate a new contract, which is going to involve this major improvement. Other, other communities that are on this system, as their contract comes up for renewal, they will have to agree to a new contract as well. So Very good. I think one of the things, too, that you know, we've been with Oak Lawn since 1972, and we started talking to Oak Lawn about this contract probably two years, two and a half, two and a half, three years ago, whatever it is. And I have to give credit to Oak Lawn. They drove a hard bargain, <clears throat> excuse me, and we drove a hard bargain back. And, but I, they were really very good to work with. Uh, they were, we started out with probably uh, four or five single space typewritten pages of questions, concerns, etc. And through the village managers and through the mayors, we've been able to whittle that down. So I, I think uh, one of the points we want to make is thanks to Oak Lawn for, for working with us on this. I think Absolutely. that's important. Absolutely. And I, I complimented Tim on the great job he did. I got they're not here, but I'd love the, uh, the five village managers that spent a lot of time in between our meetings, right. monthly meetings, the village managers spent a tremendous amount of time working with the engineers and uh, working with the Oak Lawn staff. So a lot of time and effort went into this. Right, and it's reassuring to the public that all this time and all this thoughtfulness went into this process because of the expense. So getting a little bit back to the expense, let's talk about how some of that will be funded in addition to water bills seeing that minor increase. Well, part of what is going to be done is that uh, Oak Lawn was able to secure a uh, IEPA or federal or state? State revolving loan. State revolving, state revolving loan, loan. Right, right. Mm -hmm. at a very good interest rate. And that is going to be extremely helpful in, in putting the process together. And also we're doing some uh, peer engineering, that kind of thing, which kind of double checks the engineering and that kind of brings the costs down also. So I, I think at one time we, we were looking at well over $200 million. And this has been brought 
brought back to a more reasonable figure that we feel that we feel we can handle. Wonderful. Okay, so we've got that special loan, we've got the increase. Mm -hmm. Talking a little bit more about this infrastructure. So now looking out into the future, what can we expect to see? First of all, you see a lot of digging. A lot of digging. Okay, <laughs> to bury this line. The line uh, will be coming down uh, the, uh, from Oak Lawn, mm -hmm. and you have the map here to uh, give you an idea of, of where, where it'll be coming down to our particular area. But keep in mind, Chicago recently has uh, undergone some major uh, reworking of their system as well and determined they needed to raise their rates considerably uh, to pay for the system. Mm -hmm. And they passed that rate on to the users and Oak Lawn uh, in turn has to add to their right. cost of providing water out to our system. Right. And then we have our own pump station and employees and equipment. So uh, the Chicago's rates were increased considerably because they hadn't been raised in a long time. Mm -hmm. Oak Lawn will raise their rates a little bit as well and so will we. Of so course. <clears throat> the rates will go up but I said earlier, it's about $5 per month mm -hmm. per user to help pay for this improvement. So at the end of the day, it's not a huge amount for this improvement, but the water rates are also going up too. So everybody's gonna see an increase, and uh, like I said earlier, it's a little bit painful uh, to go through the process, yes. but it's necessary. No, One of the points with Chicago, and uh, Danny just touched on this, is that it's important to know that Chicago filters the water and cleans the water. Okay, and that is a major in, uh, expense in and of itself. So as the water is coming from Chicago to Oak Lawn to our communities, that water has already re been refreshed. So it, there's that, there's, that's why there's that heavy cost that the Chicago went. Mm -hmm. And let's talk a little bit about how it's so important for our residents to understand that we literally have a trickle down effect, don't we? Mm -hmm. That by yeah. the time it gets to our residents, they're still seeing about that $5 increase. And that's going to be through these entire five communities. No, no, $5 was per only month. per month per for month. the improvement. For the improvement. The, the water rates are going up higher than that with Chicago's increase and Oakland's increase. I think it's kind of important to know what a water rate includes. It includes the cost of the water from Chicago, okay. obviously. The, the cost of sending the water through Oak Lawn to Tinley Park or Orland Park. So in each of those points, there's a measure of, uh, of, uh, a measure of, uh, of cost. The pumps, you'd be surprised what a, the electricity bills to run these pumps, those kinds of things. So you need to kind of draw that all the way out. So the further out you go, the more costly it could be. Now, we, Tinley Park sells water to, Oak Lawn, uh, to, uh, to New Lenox and to Mokina. So their rates are gonna be higher than, Oak, than uh, Orland Park or Tinley Parks because they're at the further end of the line. There's more maintenance on those lines because what we have to do in each of our communities as we look at our rates, we have to make sure that we've put enough money away to maintain our internal structure, uh, which again is uh, something you have to anticipate. But each town based on their location, like Ed said, and, and uh, other factors will be paying their pro rata share. So okay. it's been, uh, a lot of time has been put into the, the structure too. You know, I will mention an interesting fact that uh, while we've had this for a while, a lot of people don't realize it, and maybe we need to do a better job of selling it, but we have conservation pricing. The, the average use of uh, uh, normal home is about 9,000 uh, gallons a month. 9,000 gallons a month. So 9,000 gallons a month right now is in the neighbor, or will be five, 528 per thousand gallons. If you can keep it under the 9,000, that's the rate you'd pay. If you go over the 9,000, 9,000 to 18,000 is six dollars and 33 cents a gallon, a thousand, and over 18,000 is 738 per thousand. So ultimately, in capitalistic America, <laughs> right. the more you buy, usually the better price. Right. In this case, the less you use, the less per thousand gallons because we're, kind of, we're trying to encourage conservation. Right. Yeah. And that's a great way to yeah. encourage oh, yeah. it, right yeah. in the pocketbook. Yeah. Yeah. You know, again, you, know, you look at some of, the, some of the communities, and I'm sure in, in Orland Park they have the same thing that we have in, in, or in uh, Tinley. In some of the newer areas, uh, sprinkler systems are the bane of water rates because you can tell what areas use the sprinkler systems. The grass is greener and those areas go up. I'm sure you've experienced the same kind of thing. And you don't have to water your grass every two days. You really don't. And people have to get onto that concept, that idea that water is not a freebie anymore. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's a costly factor. Right. Right. Besides that, if you talk mm -hmm. to landscapers, they, yeah. they tell yeah. you you don't yeah. need as much water as right. some yeah. people right. think you need. Yeah, and the yeah. grass will grow dormant and it will still survive, right. but yeah. there's right. no doubt there's, mm -hmm. a, there's a psychology behind having that green grass. Yeah. Yeah. Tim, do you have a feel for how many communities 
uh, do have conservation pricing? Uh, it's a small minority. Mm -hmm. Most communities are pricing water with a flat rate per mm -hmm. thousand gallons. Uh, it's, I think it's really less than 20 mm -hmm. out of almost 300 in our region mm -hmm. uh, that have an increasing block rate such yeah. as you gentlemen just mm -hmm. described. I would just like to add too that in addition to the wholesale price and then the operation and mm -hmm. maintenance mm -hmm. costs mm -hmm. that uh, you guys just described, that those water rates really do need to also reflect capital investments and capital costs looking forward over a long period of time. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how rates then are in sync with the true cost of water. Well, in this case, the, it's a good point. The, uh, the negotiations in this new contract also include building up a fund Mm -hmm. for future maintenance and, and emergencies and that kind of thing, which mm -hmm. I don't believe was there before. It was there, but very minimal. Very yeah, minimal. and of course yeah. it would not be responsible mm -hmm. to do the, mm -hmm. to the contrary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Tim, in terms of conservation efforts, what can individual households do to keep down water? We think so often about just the watering that we do of our lawns. Well, leaks in lawns are certainly two of the biggest ways that we waste water. Um, for example, if you have a, a faucet that's dripping, you know, a drip per second, mm -hmm. you're going to waste over 2,300 gallons of water in a year. Uh, regarding lawns, I think it's fair if everybody asks, does my lawn have a drinking problem? Uh, because we're, a, we're, we're definitely overwatering our lawns. But besides that, when you upgrade your clothes washer or your dishwasher, look for a WaterSense labeled or a WaterSense uh, approved product so that you're going to get the most efficient appliance that's available. Uh, same goes uh, with toilets when you upgrade or replace a toilet because those are, of course, the biggest users of water in our house. Um, and then uh, in terms of behavioral uh, changes, you know, use a broom instead of a, a hose when you want to mm -hmm. clean off your deck or your patio or your driveway. Uh, turn the faucet off when you're shaving or brushing your teeth and uh, don't stand there at the uh, kitchen sink while the water's running while you're just washing a, a dish or a, or a glass. Do a full load in your dishwasher. Right. Take a chance to plug our uh, Orland Park uh, website. We have uh, Smart Living Orland Park has a, a big list of conservation uh, mm -hmm. ideas mm -hmm. and energy saving ideas, so people Excellent. can go on our website as well. And just to be more conscious. Yep. And as Tim yep. mentioned, that you know, many times with, uh, with our toilets, the, the tanks leak and what have you, it's a matter of getting some dye, going up to the Orland Park Village Hall or Tinley's Park Village Hall, getting a dye, throwing it in there, and you'll find out whether it leaks or mm -hmm. not within, within 10 minutes. So it's not right. an issue. But again, people have to kind of change their way of thinking. No doubt. And sometimes that takes a bit of time. What I found interesting is that uh, with the grandchildren I have, they are coming from schools, from their schools with the conservation ideas. Hey, Grandpa, we should do this, or Mom, we should do that. You're using too much water. So the, the younger generation is, is getting attuned to it. Yep, we're going to learn a lot from our kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If we could get back for a little bit about these residential water rates. We touched on it a little bit. What goes into the water rate? Well, I'm just going to break it down for you real quick. I, I, uh, come 2014, when all of us are going to be changing our rates, um, you know, it's, it, it really is broken down. I think Ed was talking earlier about the, you know, the passing it down the line, but about 64% of your bill mm -hmm. is the cost of Chicago's water and them cleaning and, and p pumping it out to Oak Lawn. And then Oak Lawn is another, a little over 5% of your overall cost. And then in the case of Orland Park, another 30% is, is Orland Park's cost to deliver to each individual home. So, okay. so when it you, would be similar. Yeah, similar. Okay. But when you break it down, it's uh, like you said, I think you, you even said earlier, it's a, a pass down. Th right. Three different levels. So Exactly. And it, you can really see where so much of that cost takes place in the city of Chicago. But each, each of those systems or each of those portions of the cost, they play an important role. Right. I mean, Chicago, mm -hmm. like Ed said, is, is cleaning the water and, mm -hmm. and pumping it out of Lake Michigan. Right. Oak Lawn is, uh, is adding uh, the chlor you know, the chlorine filtering it as well and, yeah. and pumping it onto us. So, and they have to keep their pump station right. upgraded. And so there's a lot, of, a lot involved. Yeah, Tim, those quality methods are absolutely essential, right? There's no cutting ends there. We cannot cut. Well, that's right. And it's, it's more than likely that uh, drinking water standards will only need to become stronger with, okay. with new uh, limits on new toxins that are out in the, in the lake and elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So certainly from a water quality perspective, we can't expect uh, treatment costs to go down. Right, no cutting corners. That's right. And, and one thing about the way water flows uh, for these communities, it reminds us too that you know, nobody is really isolated or independent from their neighbor. Mm -hmm. uh, water really is a shared resource. Uh, what we learned coming out of the Water 50 uh, planning process 
was that uh, we, we don't really have uh, shortages or scarcity, but we have a waste problem. Hmm. And when we uh, think about all the millions of new people that will move to our region by mid-century, there is real concerns about whether or not uh, our supplies, given current rates of use, uh, will match up as well as they need to with mm -hmm. uh, the amount of new people we expect here. One of the things we haven't talked about, we've talked about what the water means to the residents, those kinds of things. We haven't talked about what water means for economic development ah, for true. our own communities, such as Orland and Tinley. Uh, both of us have uh, very strong commercial and industrial areas for development. And when folks go looking to see where development is, is going to take place, what is your supply of water? How much water can you supply? Uh, is it a high water user? Can we get that water? So that's a key as part of, uh, part of development for our area is to provide that kind of system, a dependable system mm -hmm. for a business to come in and say, yes, I will build my, my business here. I will build my building here because you have a good water supply as part of the entire project. I think you'd agree with that, Dan. Right. Yep. Yep. Well, I mentioned earlier that the, the demand in 2030 will be about 101 uh, million gallons a day for our system. Uh, that, in, that involves some estimating of what kind of growth we will have, mm -hmm. uh, residential and commercial. So, Okay, good to know. Now in the last few minutes that remain, I'd like to talk about what happens next. Here we are in mid-late 2013. What, can, what will our residents begin to see? What's the next step in this process besides, of course, educating mm -hmm. everyone as to... Well, right now we've, we've spent the last over two years uh, working on the contract with Oakland, so right now we're going to have to sign we're all in a position of signing contracts with Oak Lawn, the new contract that's been worked on. So that's the next step. And then Oak Lawn in, in will then follow up with contracts for actual construction. And I think construction is probably about 15 months. I'm not sure. There, that's still kind of up in the air. But we're, we're talking a fairly lengthy period of time to put that 60-inch line in the water, in, your, a, in the ground. What's your best guess as to when construction would begin? I would say sometime late 14. Late 2014. If not sooner. If not sooner. If not sooner. Yeah. Okay. A lot of it depends upon uh, make sure they get the right of ways from ComEd and from the Forest Preserve District and those kinds of things. And the whole contract bidding. Yeah, there's, there's always some, all some, some hiccup right. someplace that always, that always comes up. Right. That's why I asked for a best yeah. guess. <laughs> all the things we can't it's, control. At best, it's a, it's a guesstimate. Yeah. <laughs> so if you had to really c condense this, what's the most important thing you want our residents to know, our area residents? Is it about infrastructure, about cost, conservation? I think we're planning for the future. I think we're planning, planning for, the for the future. This is a generational project. It's probably the biggest project any of us will ever work on. Really? I think it's the why that is important. Why are we doing this? We, dealt, we did it in 72, mm -hmm. we're doing it in 2013, why? To ensure the successes that we've had since 1972 up to the present time, we want to make sure those successes continue with the new line and the redundant line. I think that's part of the key, why we are doing it. Very good. Trust me, we wouldn't have gone through all of this and all those other good things mm -hmm. unless we felt very strongly that this is important for our communities. Very good. And Tim, what are your thoughts upon prog progress at this point in time? Well, there's a lot of reason to be optimistic. There really are a tremendous amount of resources out there that are available for homeowners and regular citizens to really develop a better understanding of how much water they use and how, how they might become more efficient and conservative with that use. For example, the Alliance for Water Efficiency has a water calculator on their website that anybody can access to better understand their household water use as well as ideas for them to become a little bit more efficient. And so uh, that's really the key is just to become a little bit more aware of how critical water is and uh, that we need to be less wasteful of it mm -hmm. and more efficient with its use. And I think, Tim, part of what you, you were talking about, there's relatively few communities uh, who have the conservation methods that we have with the two tiers, et cetera, that kind of thing. And I think the, the regional planning that we are doing here along with your group almost is, a, is kind of an example for other parts of the country to follow. Well, that's exactly right. It, it is a model, certainly the cooperation mm -hmm. that your consortium of communities uh, are exhibiting in, in sharing the costs mm -hmm. of an important new infrastructure project. Um, so uh, we, that's it. We need to band together and act more as a community uh, that goes beyond our village fences. Right. Mm -hmm. right. We have to look beyond that. I, I will add uh, that uh, the village managers did an outstanding job of putting fact sheets together and drawings and uh, that'll all be, and we couldn't talk about it in a, in a mm -hmm. short 
uh, TV show be on our individual be on websites, our websites. There'll right. be newsletters right. and media will be will so be covering all that. So the education and the communication that's is just kind of the continue. next step that's right. going to follow. Right. Yeah. Very good. Good. It's worth reminding folks too that even with higher water rates, most of us are paying more each month for our cell phone or for cable television mm -hmm. than we do for water service or wastewater service. And what's really most important here? Exactly. So, I think you hit on a point there. Compared to other parts of the nation, we have a relatively easy water supply right and a cheap water supply compared to other communities around the nation uh, I know we've looked at some studies and uh, looked at some different uh, water rates from different parts of the country and ours are pretty reasonable to some of those well we're blessed to have Lake Michigan so mm -hmm. it really is our responsibility to uh, to use that resource you, wisely you touched on earlier though you touched on the water we're drawing out of Lake Michigan that isn't necessarily returned to Lake Michigan well that's so right people don't understand that mm -hmm. that issue that's why Illinois access to the lake is limited and every community that is using it has a fixed allocation uh, because all that water gets diverted essentially to the Gulf of Mexico uh, as a result of reversing the Chicago River over 100 years ago. So even when it rains, the more rain we receive, then our, our allotment to the lake is, uh, is debited because that water is diverted away. Interestingly enough, part of Tinley Park, south of the, uh, of the uh, metro line, drains into the Gulf of Mexico. Naturally. Most people, naturally. Yeah. Okay. Most people don't realize mm -hmm. that as, as close the as water. we are here to Lake Michigan, it goes down the Mississippi. Yeah, the old watershed divide yeah. is right yeah. in this neighborhood. It's west. It. Yeah. It west. Excellent. Yeah, all the things that we take for granted, yeah. where we get our water, where it goes yeah. after yeah. we use yeah. it. Yeah. Everybody thinks you go this way and it opens, but there's a whole system, <sighs> backup system that you have to take into consideration. That's for sure. Gentlemen, any final thoughts before we end our, con our conversation today? Mayor McLaughlin? Well, I just think uh, that uh, the village managers and mayors that have been meeting uh, for the last uh, couple of years uh, have been very dedicated to the, the uh, task of providing for the future and I, I think with our education program I think people will appreciate that generations from now. Very good. And I think I, I would express uh, thanks on behalf of all of us to Oak Lawn for their cooperation and those kinds of things. And I think the programs such as we're doing here tonight is uh, answering the question why. I think many people are going to say, why? They're not going to like the increase. None of us like the increase. But I think you have to understand the reason for it from the community residential standpoint and from economic development and, quite frankly, from a safety standpoint. Mm -hmm. That line was built in 72. That's a couple of years old. Yes, it is. So, uh, you know, we, we've had some breaks on it, and we want to make sure that the, uh, we have a redundant system to make sure that that supply is there, stable, and dependable. Mm -hmm. And Tim, you think these communities are ready to go. They've done a lot of responsible planning. They really have. I think they're doing exactly what most communities in the country uh, need to be doing. And uh, to follow up on a point Mayor Zabraki made uh, a little while ago, um, our prosperity as a region really does depend on adequate supplies of water and the infrastructure in a healthy state to make sure that water gets to where it's needed. Great. Thank you, gentlemen, so Thank much. You. It's been a Thank great you. conversation. I've learned a great deal. I know that all of our residents will as well. Thanks again to Mayor Dan McLaughlin, Village of Orland Park, uh, Mayor Ed Zabraki from the Village of Tinley Park, and of course, Dr. Tim Loftus, who is the Water Resource Planner with CMAP. I'm Lisa O'Toole. Thank you again. We'll see you next time. For more information, visit these websites.